everyone. How are you doing today? I hope everybody's doing well. In today's video, we are going to look into the matters of the heart in this little pick a card reading. And as you can see, I've already picked three cards for you. These three cards represent three different um, stages or situations that can be related to love. The first one, which is represented by the Six of Wands, is you recovering from a broken relationship. So this is the aftermath of a breakup. If you're still going through it, even if some time has passed, this card will be your guide in this situation. And I'm going to explain the meaning of the card when I have picked an additional card later on. The second option is if you are in a relationship right now and your card for this situation is the Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. A beautiful card in this tarot deck, which, by the way, I know you guys like to ask which deck I'm using, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, it's the Klimt Tarot. This is what the um, packaging looks like. It's very, very pretty. It has these golden parts. It's a great deck. And the last one is when you are looking for love. So that's obviously way, way after a breakup. It's when you have already gathered yourself and you're looking for a new relationship. You're looking for ways to um, connect with a partner. Perhaps you already have a potential um, romantic interest on the horizon at this point. And the Six of Swords is going to be your guidance for this life situation. And now I'm going to go ahead and draw one, one additional card for each life situation. So one for the people who are going through or have recently gone through and recovering from a breakup. People who are currently in a relationship. And people who are looking for a new relationship. Now, obviously, this reading format has its limitations. It's a general reading. So if you like a more personal take on your love life, I offer various reading types that deal with this topic. So feel free to email me check out my Patreon or PayPal. I offer something called the relationship reading, which um, is used to look into an already existing relationship. So depending on your situation, I would like you to skip to the relevant part of the reading. Or if you would like, you can listen to all three Hopefully you can learn something from each, but um, you will be able to 
uh, to find the, the relevant section in the description and, and also hopefully the video itself is going to uh, display these three different sections so you can just go ahead and jump to whichever you are interested in so right now we're going to speak to the issue of a breakup and the post breakup difficulties we've all been there and by the way I picked these cards randomly so I didn't choose them uh, but they are completely relevant and they reveal some import important information basic information about each life situation so if you are going through heartbreak if you are recovering from a breakup the six of wands is here to remind you that now more than ever it's of crucial importance that you support your ego the six of wands is a fiery card wands represent fire and the six of wands is about celebrating your accomplishments and being celebrated allowing others to show their appreciation it's about allowing your ego to rebuild itself by the praise and appreciation of others and your own self so it's very important to shift your focus and attention onto who you are and how valuable you are how fierce, how powerful, how creative you are to divert your attention from the relationship which obviously requires a mindset of us instead of me, the individual so that obviously takes some time to be able to switch back into that appreciation of you as a separate individual but this is what needs to happen during this process and the additional card that we have for you is the fool the fool is a beautiful card it's really quite um, it's really quite scary, the Fool, in this deck, because we have this uh, person completely naked, ashamed, exiled from paradise, and starting out on this journey that will take him God knows where. So it's that moment of... Um, you know, having eaten from the apple, if we want to go down the uh, biblical route of interpretation, this is the moment of realizing that you're no longer in this paradise state, which the comfort of a relationship, the uh, you know the uh, the embrace of another person can be a, a sort of paradise state, an ignorance, a blissful um, state of not having to know who you are, losing yourself in a relationship, can have this, um, this sort of element of, uh, of escapism to it. And when you can no longer enter this space of uh, distraction 
when you no longer have the safety and the security, the emotional support of a relationship, it's easy to feel this desperation that is illustrated by this card. However, the Fool is the ultimate card of opportunities. And, you know, this is something that everybody's going to tell you if you go through a breakup. It's the first thing that you will hear. And you might be tired of hearing it. But it's true, nevertheless. Your life is just beginning. You are entering a completely new chapter and the possibilities are endless here. So focusing on your individual journey, on your desires, on your, uh, on your ego structure, rebuilding it, strengthening it, gaining more confidence from the new things that you start is going to help you pull through. And so it's interesting because the fool in this deck is, uh, I think the implied meaning is, it's number zero, obviously, that's uh, in every deck. But here, the start of the major arcana journey seems to be associated with loss a loss of innocence, a loss of this ignorant uh, state of bliss that I have explained. Um, so the first step is painful, possibly the first few steps. And you might really feel like the dominant feeling is this feeling of emptiness, the number zero, um, which can be interpreted as the lack of something. But if you really think about it, this circle, the number itself, represents eternity represents a fullness, an untouched and untouchable and unbreakable fullness. It's back to ground zero, basically. What you have right now, nobody can take away from you. It's your pure self. Facing this quintessential you this uh, deep self, having been in a relationship for a while, can be a painful experience. Because in relationships, we can, you know, uh, lose ourselves and we can pretend like we are more than what we are. But the breakup experience is guiding you back to that primal layer of who you are. The fool who is, who has nothing in this life apart from his trust in the universe. And so the cards would like you to know that although it might be and it probably is very hard right now. The pathway forward can be glorious. All it takes is you shifting your focus back onto those activities. It's very important to stay active. This is a fire card. So this is everything to do with your passion and your creativity. So 
focusing your efforts on staying creative and experimenting and taking on new challenges every day. It's the thing that's going to make the difference as you move on. But if you are in this uh, desperate state of the fool, feeling this uh, terrifying, vacant feeling of nothingness, if you are still in this state, that's okay too. Just have compassion for for this for this feeling, this state of being that you're in right now, and give it some time. When you have gained some power, when you have strengthened yourself a little bit, you will be able to accomplish even more things than before, and you will shine even brighter. Okay, um, the second life situation is if you are in a relationship. The Ten of Pentacles, Pentacles represent the earth element. So we are going to talk about that aspect of relationships that makes them a solidifying, a stabilizing force in our lives. The Ten of Pentacles is basically a safety network. So this is about your relationship being kind of like an asset in your life. It's like a resource. Uh, not necessarily in the material sense, although relationships uh, tend to have a, uh, you know, um, a physically, materially, or financially stabilizing effect as well, the good ones anyway, uh, but more so in its strengthening you as a, uh, as an earthy being. So let's see what, uh, oh, very good. The second card is the Ten of Cups. So that's the emotional part of it, the counterpart, that makes it a really full and emotionally rewarding experience. The Ten of Cups is about being loved and being loved unconditionally. So the theme and the topic and the question that these two cards bring to you is whether you are feeling these two relationship elements in your in your current relationship is there a feeling of being able to rely upon your partner from a, a ten of pentacles point of view so can you trust that they are going to be there for you? That they will help you out? Can you provide help to this person who is your partner? Can you help them move closer to their goals? Are you building something together? Are you perhaps thinking about starting a family or a business together? I think these two cards are, are basically about the ideal relationship. So if the answer is yes to these questions, if you feel deep within your heart that you are fully and unconditionally accepted and emotionally supported, in this relationship. If you feel like your lives are being intertwined 
in the most practical ways as well. If you feel like you are growing together, uh, also financially or perhaps career-wise, and also in an emotional sense, that's a good relationship. And that should be, you know, obvious to anyone. But you'd be surprised. And perhaps if you look at your current relationship, you'll find that those ten pentacles, some of the pentacles are missing. The ten cups, some of the cups are missing. You cannot rely on your partner fully. You cannot expect understanding and love from them. You cannot feel safe in the relationship. So if you look within your heart and you feel like this relationship is one of those where you can never be entirely sure what you get or you're just discovering now that your expectations have been really low and you settle for five of those pentacles, five of those cups, which is actually less than half. So this is not mathematics here. This is uh, a spiritual truth, is that the half of the half of the fullness that you experience in, in rewarding and healthy relationships is not half. It's basically nothing. It's not something that you should settle for. It's not something that you should be satisfied with. So I would like to draw another card to those people who are now looking into their hearts and are finding that their current relationship does not live up to this ideal these values what should they do we have ten of swords how exciting how interesting that these tens are showing up here ten by the way is the highest number in the tarot in the minor arcana so it's the most intense or most um, you know, the most uh, dynamic, the fullest expression of the given suit. So this is earth and water, the element of pragmatic stability and empathetic emotional support. And so basically these two cards are telling me that you deserve the best and your partner also deserves the best from you. So if there's something missing on either of your uh, parts or either of these ends of the same situation, the tarot is advising you to to tune into the energy of the Ten of Swords which is quite a radical energy. Swords represent air, the intellect. And so the Ten of Swords is urging you to get to the bottom of this. No more trying to save yourself from pain. No more trying to settle for less than what you deserve. No more white lies. The Ten of Swords is a quite an intense expression of spiritual truth-seeking where you no longer are interested in preserving your illusions. And 
you are ready to confront even the most unpleasant facts and insights about this relationship. So if you are if you are now waking up to the fact that your relationship is not built on the ten pentacles and the ten cups, then it's time to uh, acquire these ten swords and cut through the noise and make sure that everything is exposed everything that's been missing everything that's lacking in this relationship bring it to the surface it's better to live an uncomfortable truth than to stay asleep in an un- in a in a comfortable convenient lie go towards the pain if you are feeling uncomfortable looking at these two cards because you're feeling that your relationship is somehow not living up to it you can feel deep inside that uh, this relationship is just not all that in that case walk towards the pain walk towards the ten swords It's easier said than done, but according to the tarot, that's where you can perhaps find a breakthrough point where things will be clarified, whether this relationship can be salvaged. And the ten pentacles and ten cups can be manifested in this relationship or whether it's a hopeless endeavor the cards are urging you to find out and finally if you are looking for a relationship The Six of Swords is your Guidance card. The Six of Swords is about a change of perspective. This is Swords. And as I've mentioned before, if you have watched the second section of this uh, video, you know that Swords represent the air element. So this has to do with your thinking, your way of thinking, your perceptions and interpretations of those perceptions. And also, most importantly, with the Six of Swords, it's your strategy. It's very important to know your past and to not only know it, having gone through it, having witnessed it as an outsider, but to know it as a librarian knows where the books are in the library to know it in a in an organized and analytical fashion to know your past uh, with the confidence and the uh, cognitive clarity that allows you to avoid the mistakes that might have led to heartache in the past. And the Three of Wands is the accompanying card. Wands represent fire. The Three of Wands is about looking at the biggest uh, most long-term scenario that you can instead of jumping into something as a form of escapism 
or as a form of a spiritual painkiller because with the Six of Swords, there's still some residual pain. Um, it's important that you um, that you rely on this inventory of past memories, of past relationships, and that you try to approach this subject with a level of impartial, objective, analytical, um, methodical mindset. Um, so relying on that, it's also important that you think long term. Perhaps one of the things that have been missing from your previous attempts was the fact that you did not really think through whether you were compatible with your partner in the long term. Don't be scared to ask the big questions. Um, there are indicators of uh, whether two people are going to be able to make it in the long term. For example, it's it's better to be clear on the, like I said, the big questions in the beginning. For example, it's better to know if the other person wants children or not up front. It's better to clarify how you see yourself, uh, you know, proceeding in the in the in the next few years, where you want to live, what you want to do, what do you expect from relationships. So in your, in your quest for a new partner, the cards are asking you to make sure that you keep this in mind, that you keep in mind that long-term compatibility is, um, is absolutely a cornerstone of a successful relationship. Even if you are in just the dating phase of a new budding relationship, it's important that you clarify those details and that you and that you accept if there are differences that are irrecon uh, irreconcilable. Uh, so. It's better to drop a relationship in the primary stages if you find that your partner is for some reason not compatible with you than to go into it and have your heart broken later on. So being very strategic, uh, kind of cold-headed and... Uh, and logical and rational about the issue is going to help you in the long term and your passion is going to grow in a more safe uh, or more secure environment if you make sure that there's room to grow and there's not going to be big uh, you know obstacles and concrete walls in your way as you proceed with the relationship I hope that you found the reading interesting or useful. Again, if you would like a personal reading on your love life, feel free to message me. And I hope to see you in another video.